Hello. Okay, welcome to my top 10 moments in film from 2023. This is a list of moments that really stood out to me from all of the movies that I watched last year. They are moments that really resonated with me and that I just really, really liked, whether it be from a technical aspect or to what it was they were trying to say with this particular moment. These are moments that stayed with me long after watching uh, the movie. And yeah, I'm looking forward to really sharing with you all what those moments are. It was a bit of a tough list to put together because there was a lot of moments in a lot of movies that I really liked from last year. But there were definitely 10 that I just that just really stood out to me that were really powerful on sort of different in different ways. So yeah, enough rambling on. Let's get started with number 10. And in at number 10 for me is a moment from It Lives Inside. Now as a whole, this movie just didn't quite work for me, but there are a lot of aspects that I really liked about this film, which I do mention in my review. When it comes to delivering sort of those moments of horror, I felt the film was quite effective. Where this movie really did sort of falter was with its characters and their journeys. It was the writing and just the way the characters were written is what really let this movie down for me. But when it comes to the mo moments of horror, that's what I really liked and appreciated about this film because I thought they were really well done. Which ended at this, as a result, this movie ended up becoming quite a frustrating experience. But with a lot of moments dotted throughout that I really liked. But there just happened to be this very one small and very simple but effective moment within this movie that just really worked for me. It's the moment where you got our lead character Sam talking to her teacher Joyce in this corridor in, the, in his school. And it's just down to the lighting, just sort of the cinematography, the way the camera focuses on these sort of these shadows and reflections. And then you've got this entity sort of rising behind the teacher. This entire moment and just the way it plays out, it gave me chills. It gave me goosebumps. And it was so creepy and effective. And yeah, and it just sums up sort of all those other moments dotted throughout this movie when it comes to the horror and delivering the horror. Yes, it's a very small and simple scene, but it's also a very good example of how effective and how well crafted those moments of horror are within this movie. It's one of the aspects that I really dug about this film and it's just one of those moments that always sort of stayed with me after watching the film as well and reminded me of sort of that frustrating experience that is It Lives Inside. So yeah, the moment with Sam and Joyce in the corridor in the school is in at number 10 for me. And in at number 9, again, is a very small but very effective moment, a very bittersweet moment, and that is from Dream Scenario. It's the very final scene, the very final moment where you've got our lead character, Paul, played beautifully by Nicolas Cage. And he uses this kind of dream, sort of this dream technology where he can sort of place himself into his ex-wife's dream so they can sort of relive a moment in their past and... It's such a sad moment um, due to sort of the events that build up to this moment. Um, but it's just the way in which this scene plays out. It, it's a moment that really did stay with me long after the movie. Um, but just the way in which, in which it plays out and sort of rolls into the credits. The entire scene is almost like you're waking up out of a dream yes, yourself. Well, it did for me anyway, personally. And I just felt like it was the perfect way to end this story. It was, like I said, very bittersweet. It was the sort of the cherry on the top for me. And yeah, a beautiful moment, but a very sad and emotional moment. That just really sort of had me thinking about not just this scene but the overall ex experience as a whole and really reflecting on it and sort of those many different layers that dream scenario has. But yeah, it's a moment that really stood out to me. It's again, it's a very small and kind of simple moment, but such an effective moment and one that kind of really hits hard emotionally. So yeah, it's the dream travel technology scene, um, the ending of dream scenario for me that's in at number nine. <music> 
And in at number eight is Blue Beetle. It's the moment while unconscious, Jaime sees a vision from his father who encourages him to embrace his destiny as the new Blue Beetle. Jaime awakens and escapes and then what follows is a very fun action scene, an action set piece. And this might come to a surprise to a lot of people, but Blue Beetle, I really liked this movie and it almost landed in my top 10 favourite movies of 2023. It was a pleasant surprise and it's this moment in the movie that kind of really stood out to me and really kind of encapsulates what this film, what this story was all about. It hit me hard emotionally and it has that kind of very 90s retro superhero vibe to it that just took me back to being a kid again. It's fun, it's exciting. And, you know, you've got a guy in an actual suit. It sort, of, it, like, it sort of adds to that kind of very authentic but retro vibe to the movie. And you can just feel the love and passion in front of the camera and behind in sort of how they crafted this story. And it all comes together beautifully into this one moment where you've got Jaime sort of unconscious and he's in this dreamlike state talking to his father when he's encouraging him to embrace Blue Beetle. And then he awakens to have this very kind of fun, exciting action scene where he kicks ass down this corridor and like I said I was grinning I was smiling but it also really hit me hard emotionally and it's a moment that's effective down to the writing and how they've written these characters and the performances from the cast that really sort of allow this moment to become as effective as it was for me Blue Beetle is an origin story done right it's got it's a very heartfelt story and that's why it works for me and that's why it's in this particular moment is in at number eight for me And in at number seven, it's John Wick chapter four and it's the moment in the apartment where John Wick makes his way through and he's, he's blasting people away and the camera sort of slowly goes up into the ceiling and then we just watch the entire scene play out. And it was just so much fun. It was creative. It was imaginative. It was almost like this particular scene was really showcasing what makes the John Wick series so much fun. You know, it's really showcasing sort of the choreography and the stunts, all the talent behind sort of what it takes to craft these movies. It all seems to come together in this one moment. And it was so much fun and exciting. And I just had a big grin watching this scene. And it's just one of those moments... That, yeah, really stood out to me and I loved it. So, yeah, the apartment massacre scene from John Wick Chapter 4 comes in at number 7 for me. And in at number 6, it's the killer with the brute fight scene. I loved this scene. You, the, from the way in which they just use the camera and utilize, you know, so that just from the way they move the camera and how the camera moves through this scene, it really does a good job at conveying uh, the sort of the energy behind this scene, behind the, the character of the brute. You can feel that energy to the point where this scene almost becomes like a moment from a horror film. And I just love that because you could sort of, you feel the threat that Michael Fassbender's character is up against. And with him being a much sort of smaller character, it becomes a very kind of nail-biting, tension-filled experience. And it's all utilized through the choreography and just the way in which the scene plays out with the camera and how David Fincher uses the camera in this moment with the cinematography and just the sort of the sound effects and the kind of that very limited use of music in the background. It just all adds to a very effective, energy-filled, tension-filled, nail-biting moment. And yeah, I absolutely adore this moment and it's in at number six for me. And in at number five, it's Talk To Me. Now, there's a lot of scenes like with It Lives Inside where, you know, there's a lot of scenes that I really liked and stood out, but this is one scene in particular, and it's the first possession scene where our lead character, played by Sophie Wilde, first touches the hand. And it's a moment that, you know, we've seen in films, you know, so many other movies, possession films, but yeah, the way in which they craft these moments, it's still, ma they still manage to make it feel fresh and different and just like a whole new experience almost. And it's the way they utilize the camera in the scene, which I really dug. But what really 
elevates this moment and for this moment to become so effective is the performance from our lead Sophie Wilde. She is amazing in this movie and she gives us this very kind of raw and real performance that allows us to buy into what is happening on the screen because it is quite fantastical. At the end of the day, it's a possession movie. But the way in which they do it and just the way in which they use the camera. You know, we're watching a film that has a very familiar premise. You know, we've seen so many of these possession movies. But yet we've got a moment that really kind of does something really different but just sucks you in. And it, it, it's a very creepy scene. It, it gave me goosebumps while I was watching it. And for me, it's effective just down to the way in which it's shot and the brilliant performance by Sophie Wilde who is simply fantastic especially in this moment where you've got the camera and it pans around and it just yeah you buy into the moment you buy into the horror and I really really liked it so yeah you've got the first possession scene from talk to me in at number five <music> in at number four for me it's the very final moment from Saltburn and it's the dance where you got all of our quick sort of dancing through this mansion naked and it's at this point of the movie where I felt all the pieces of the story came together and it really encapsulates what this story what this experience was for me personally anyway I absolutely love this moment it doesn't show a lot but it says so much and it's just a very effective moment and I thought it was the chef's kiss, it was the cherry on the top and it was the perfect conclusion to this character's journey and the story. You know, it's a very bizarre moment of this character just dancing through this mansion but like I said it sort of really, f it, it worked, it fitted, you know, it just made sense and that's when everything sort of, for me anyway, really just started coming together when it came to the story and this particular character. And it manages to do something else as well, which is the song that accompanies this scene, Murder on the Dance Floor. I absolutely despised this song when it first came out, um, back when I was a teenager. But you know what, I think I found a new sort of love for this song due to this moment. Because it just works beautifully with this scene. So yeah, it's a great moment and I just thought it was one of the, a perfect conclusion to the story. So yeah, the Salt Burn Dance comes in at number four for me. And in at number three from me is a movie that I could choose a lot of scenes from and that is Oppenheimer. For example, that test scene. I just love the way in which it was crafted and how it played out and is easily one of my favourite moments in film from last year. But the one that really stood out that I felt was the most powerful is the scene which I felt truly encapsulates the moral dilemma behind this story. And it's where you've got Oppenheimer addressing the public and he's haunted by his creation. And it's just the way in which this scene plays out. It's horrific. It's graphic, but it doesn't show too much. It's just... It's done just right for it to truly be effective. It's a very unsettling scene, but really does so much in this very kind of simple moment and just how uh, Nolan uses the camera in this moment and sort of those glimpses of what you do see. It really is a sort of, it gives you goosebumps. It's unsettling. It's horrific. And you, it really manages to capture the horror of what it is that's being created. And I just love it when you get moments like this that are not sort of, you know, extravagant and too over the top. It's a very simple moment, but just does so much. It says so much. It's a very powerful moment that sort of really manages to encapsulate what the story is about, what it's trying to say. And you feel a very kind of sort of daunting sensation that's sort of what it is that Oppenheimer, you know, has created. Um, upon the world and sort of set upon the world really and it's all done sort of beautifully in this one moment Oppenheimer the scene where he's haunted by his creation is in at number three for me And in at number two it's Pearl it's the moment in the kitchen where Pearl is confessing to Mitzi about how she feels and sort of her motivations and it's just a beautiful moment but a very tense and unsettling moment 
and it's a moment that's effective down to the writing and the, the stellar performance from Mia Goff. She is great in this film, but this one particular moment where she's just sitting there confessing to this character in the kitchen, and you just see this character unravel itself and reveal itself, and just the way in which it plays out, again, it's a very simple moment of just two characters in the kitchen talking, but it's down to the writing and that performance that really allows this scene to truly be effective. It's a scene, it's a moment that just really sucked me in and I was gripped. And it's, you know, you, it was sort of a mix of emotions because this is a tragic character and you feel so many different conflicting emotions in this one moment. And again, it's so, it's, it works, it's elevated through Mia Goff's stellar performance and then the moment evolves into Pearl chasing Mitzi with an axe down this pathway and it's just the way in which they use the camera in this moment oh it was just it was it was great just the way in which they create the tension and the horror within this moment is so effective and I just loved the way in which they use the camera and it, it was simply great it was superb I loved this moment it's a moment that stayed with me or throughout the entire year. In fact, for me personally, I go as far as saying that this particular scene is up there as some of the most iconic moments in horror alongside the shower scene from Psycho. That's how effective this scene was for me. It's That's how much this scene stood out to me. So yeah, it's the monologue scene that transitions into Pearl chasing Mit Mitzi with an axe. It comes in at number two for me. And in at number one for me, it's Godzilla minus one. And it's the moment where Godzilla uses his heat ray on the city of Ginza. This moment, just from the way in which it plays out with the camera panning over Godzilla's back to the destruction, to the focus on our main character on his knees, screaming out in pain and anger. This one moment is so powerful. Like it gave me goosebumps. It gave me chills. And it's a very tragic moment. And it hit hard emotionally. Like this moment, I teared up in this moment because it is so tragic and it's just the way in which they use the camera in this moment just sort of really conveys the true sense of scale like this entire movie the way in which they use a the camera you know Godzilla feels like a presence he just he doesn't just feel like a CGI creation he feels like he's there but it's such a sort of fantastical moment that's rooted so much in reality that it just makes this scene, just from the way in which it's brought to life, so much more effective. And just knowing where this story lands in history with the country, Japan, just going through devastation with the nuclear bombs, this particular moment just becomes so much more powerful as a result of that. And it's all down to it just feeling very grounded in reality and rooted in reality. It's a very dark, tragic and emotional moment. And, you know, but it, it's a moment that is truly effective. And I, it, hit you, you know, it, it hits you in a way that really kind of, it just makes you reflect on history and us as a society. And that's what the entire movie does. That's what Godzilla Minus One does. But this moment really kind of encapsulates that for me and it captures a moment in history that happened. It repeats that and it does it in a way that's truly unsettling and just gave, gave me chills. And yeah, that's why this moment is in at number one for me. So yeah, they are my top 10 moments in film from 2023. But what are you as? Please let me know in the comments below and let's get a discussion going. I do have a review coming for Night Swim that will be released by Sunday. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see future reviews, top 10s and just general movie talk from a geek in Wales, then please hit hit that subscribe button, it will mean an awful lot. And just a massive thank you to everyone that have subscribed over the year. 
and for those that have been really sort of connecting and engaging with my most re recent video my top 10 favorite movies of 2023 i'm overwhelmed by the response that that video has had and it means so much so again thank you so much for connecting for subscribing and just yeah following some just sort of random welsh geek ramble on it really does mean a lot to me so yeah thank you for watching and i'll be catching you guys soon